Oh, hello. <coughs> Hi there, and welcome to Abe's workshop. This is going to be Shed Talk number six. Now, this is a bit of an interim video, as most of my subscribers, you guys, will know. I'm in the middle of doing my tool post grinder series. I have episode nine edited. I have all the footage I need for episode ten, but I haven't edited it yet. But as many of you will be aware, I'm off on holiday and I'm going to be sort of off the chart for three weeks starting next Wednesday. This is now, uh, where are we, Friday. So, my plan is to put this video up to keep it going for the time being. And then while I'm away, I'm going to take my laptop and at some time, maybe next week, I'll put up the tool post grinder number nine. And then the final will be tool post grinder number ten. In the meantime, one of my subscribers, Harry, hi Harry, has asked, could I show the uh, screw cutting tools, the little high speed steel screw cutting tools that I was using during this tool post grinder project. So I'll show a bit of footage of the tool post grinder tools, or the screw cutting tools I used while doing the screw, uh, the spit your words out, eh? <laughs> while doing the tool post grinder. I haven't had uh, the, one sip, that's it, honest guys. <laughs> And I'm not going back in the workshop today, so it's alright to have a can of beer. Alcohol and machinery do not mix. Anyway, so I'll show the footage of the, just showing the lathe tools that I used for the, uh, for the project, as I said. And I do a little bit of modification to my little centre drills for the tail stock. Something I've been meaning to do for a while, shorten the grub screws, put a taper on the front. And I'll show a bit of footage of that. And in the meantime, while I'm away, I will put up the toolbox grinder number nine. And I will also put up, you know, on a sort of four or five day basis, put up the tool post grinder finale, plan F, as I'm calling it, um, while I'm away. I may also, because I'm taking my laptop, I will have all my footage from the complete series of AIDS workshop. And as you can imagine, there are a fair few outtakes on there. So I may gather all that footage together and do an outtakes video. If you guys want to see it, let me know in the comments below. and I'll see what I can do while I'm away. It's one of those things I can edit, put them all together while I'm having my morning coffee, so to speak, you know, before the sun comes up at five o'clock in the morning, which I get up on holiday at five. No, I don't. <laughs> anyway, go to bed at five, more like. Anyway, so... I could do that video, if you want to see a video like that, it's going to be 5-10 minutes, I show it warts and all, I'll show everything that I've got, all my outtakes, all my cock-ups, all the rest of it, there are lots, you know, none of us are perfect, we all have them, stalling the lathe out, breaking cutters, jamming things, swarf flying everywhere, it's always good fun watching outtakes. A little bit of language, I probably will put a warning up at the beginning about bad language that might be in it. It's not too bad. I, I, there are words I use and there are words I don't use. Um, nothing too coarse, I promise. Um, as you've probably seen, when things go wrong, I'm quite calm. I'll say, oh, bugger, or something like that. I'm quite good like that. I've got used to not swearing, having done lots of film work over the years. Anyway, so... Let me know if you want me to do an outtakes video while I'm away. Uh, another thing I'm thinking, I am taking the camera with me when I go. Um, I will be doing, I may do a separate channel, AIDS Adventures, something like that. Uh, or I may put the video straight up on AIDS Workshop, but it'll be the title. It's going to be like holiday shots of the resort I'm in, boat trips, that sort of thing. If you're interested, feel free to watch. But what I will say is there's not going to be any machining in it. Um, you know, unless I find a, a machine shop somewhere I can do a bit of videoing in or of while I'm away. But I've been to the place I'm going before in Crete. Uh, there's very little engineering going on in that area. Well, certainly not the sort of engineering that you'd want to see. Anyway, so, yeah, bit of content today. Interim video, as I say. I'm away for a few weeks, but I'll try and keep the videos coming in one form or another. So, hope you enjoy, guys. I've been asked to show the screw cutting tools that I've used on this uh, tool post grinder project. For the M19 in the aluminium, M19 by 2, I've got this basically piece of 10mm key steel, which is tough, hard stuff. 
used for making keys, you know, that go into keyways in shafts, that sort of thing. It's a piece of 10mm key steel. Drilled and tapped the end, I think it was an M4 for a grub screw. Then cross drilled it, I think it was 5mm. And I've got a piece of, in this case, it's a piece of 5mm punch blank. I pressed it in. I can adjust it in and out for, you know, various depths or what have you. Now, I originally used to use this as a boring bar, but it's now come in for this particular screw cutting tool. 60 degree point on the end, relieved on the underside, so it, it's sloped back there, it's sloped back there. It's 60 degree point, a very large radius on this one particularly, because it matched up. I actually blended it to match that plastic thread. Anyway, so that's what that is. Now, a 5mm punch blank is what's in there. These are what I call punch blanks, and I've got like hundreds of them. So that would be a punch that would go in a press tool, and the head on it would go into a recess in the back of a punch plate with a wear plate on the back and what have you. And it would be used for punching through in a press tool uh, for piercing steel. Anyway, so moving on, that's a punch blank, and it, they're nominal ground 5mm diameter, and they're hardened ground tempered, you know, they are pre hardened. So what I did with this one, it was in fact, it was absolutely identical to this one. I ground the top away flat to the shaft, a little bit lower, almost to the centre line. Ground the back off, ground the bottom off. Then out of the little bit that was left, ground the 60 degree V. In fact, there's hardly any radius at all. I just broke the edge with, a, with an oil stone on there with its 5mm shaft. And then I mounted it up and used it for that little M8 by one internal screw cutting. Uh, so that's that one, but that's, yeah, that's probably the, a, an absolute minuscule boring bar. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the boring bar or the screw cutting tool that I used internally. Um, for the M8 and M5 on the outside, I did have to make the, the radius on the end a little bit smaller for the M5. Just dressed it up, basically. I just ground 60 degree V again on the end of a piece of, uh, I think this is like, uh, I don't know, 3, 8, 5, 16 tool steel, piece of Momax, what have you. Ground it up. Again, relief angles in this direction and this direction. 60 degree on the top. Done by eye, using my fishtail, what have you, um, to grind that up. And there's a little bit of top rake on there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that one. I mean, it is ground all off square to the holder, but you just square the, the tip up to the job, as it were. Um, interestingly, on the other end of that, I got a tiny little recessing tool. I think I ground that up many moons ago for doing an undercut in a bore, uh, a little narrow undercut. I can't remember what the job was, um, but, you know, it takes time to grind these things. So once you've got one, you know, you don't sacrifice it for something else. You chuck it to one side and try and keep a stock of, Tool steels, you know, so you've got various tools for various jobs. Um, saves a lot of time grinding, you know, if you come to ever have to do that job again. Or you have something similar to do where you can make use of the same tool. That's a piece of 516 Momax Cobalt, that one. I can just see it printed on there. Cleveland, Cleveland, US. Cleveland, Cleveland GB. Anyway, Momax Cobalt. Um, so, yeah, I've got... Thankfully, in various diameters, 6, 8, 10, 5, 4, 3, these punch blanks, and I've got a drawer full of various broken ones that have been taken out of press tools as they've been repaired over the years. So, yeah, I always hang on to them because they are hardened and ground tool steel, basically. Yep, so that's the screw cutting tools I was using. So I got these little uh, M6 by 16 grub screws, the ones I got from the uh, quick change tool post, the tool holders. They're the only ones I've got, actually, grub screws in stock. And they're also the ones that are in these center drill holders, and they were way too long. So I'm shortening them up. I'm doing it. I've decided to go ahead and do it. I've just done one of them. So I'll just show you. I got it up in the uh, three jaw. I'm not really, really tight with this. And I'm just taking it gently. Just going to skim them down. Now, I'll take a few cuts off the diameter. Now, grub screws are pretty damn tough, typically. And, well, hacksawing it would be hard work. I could hacksaw it, could grind it off, but holding it without burning your fingers is, is uh, tricky when you're grinding things off. You know, small components, they get hot very quickly. And just taking a series of little light cuts, just knocking that diameter down to something manageable. Uh, they 
basically give myself a little groove in the bottom. And that should, there we go, pop off. Right, I'm on a flat bottom on these, so I'm just gonna paste that across. The carriage is pushing back. I got a tiny little pip in there. I think the edge of that tool might be a little bit worn. Normally they're pretty good on centre. So I'll just bring that out a little bit more now. Because I want to put I say I'm not tight with a chuck. Put a little uh, chamfer on the bottom to tidy the end of those threads back up. And I'm gonna have to file that little pip off. Just tidy those threads back up. I'm going to bring the tool out of the way. And I'm going to file. There's a tiny, tiny clip in the middle there. Just a tip for safety. I have a fist file once I clean. But just a tip for safety when filing. If I was to be sort of here, and I slip, and the end of this file gets caught in one of those teeth, it could kick it out at me and cause all sorts. When you're filing in the lake, make sure that the end of the file is always beyond all the jaws so here I'm not going to get it caught between two jaws and it's not going to kick up and smack me in the face stab me through the chest you get the picture if I was to be back here and I just slipped and caught it it's either going to kick it out snap it out of my hand you know if it goes between let me just show if it was if I was using the end here and I got caught there then as you can imagine, it's going to, it could, you know, if I got caught there, it will kick it back and hit me. If I'm over here, no matter what happens, it's just going to rattle around on those jaws. So keep the end of your file, if you're filing, doesn't matter whether you're filing out, you know, away from chuck, but particularly when you're close, close to the chuck. Keep the end of your file beyond the outside of the chuck, so to speak. That's just a little safety tip. A lot of people frown on filing in the lathe. It's not a problem, not a problem at all, but just do it safely and, you know, just think at all times. So as you can see, there was nothing there. I was like two fingers undoing that, but I was only tickling along on it. So yeah, I can uh, to give these a clean. And just screw those grub screws back in now. And that looks about right which one's that the large or the small that's the large one now that looks better doesn't it i think what i'm going to do and it was suggested to me is put a chamfer on the front of this now i can't come too far because i'm going to intrude on the grub screw but i'll chamfer it back to just the edge of that thread i think from the front there just to give a bit more clearance for swarf to come out and I think I'll do the same on the smaller one as well. Let's just put the grub screw back in there. In fact, I've done both grub screws the same length, so this one should be below the surface a little, so I may be able to get a bigger chamfer. Well, <laughs> below the surface a little, yeah, maybe half a millimetre, a millimetre more. Okay, so yeah, I think I'll put a chamfer on these. So I'm just using my uh, 45 degree tool and I got it slewed round because it's a, a sort of funny angle I'm looking at. I don't want to intrude on the grub screw hole, so I'm just bringing the outside back at that angle. Let's have a look where I am in relation to the grub screw. Right there. So that will be my depth. So now I'll just take a series of cuts, so I'm not trying to cut the whole face in one hit, so to speak. sort of feel when the two line up. I'm trying to just hold it off before it starts to shatter. There. That 
with a bit of a polish looks like it'll do the job well a bit of a before and after that looks a lot better than a little burr there oh no it's a bit of dirt there we are vast improvement a job i've been meaning to do for a while one of those five minute jobs you never get round to so i'll just do the other one now and happy days there we are that's the pair of them done yeah one of those five minute jobs you just never get round to and i got round to it well i do hope you enjoyed this episode of shed talk guys as i say if you want me to do an outtakes video while i'm away comment below we'll see what the reception is again if i do some aids adventures ones comment below you haven't got to watch them it'll be just blah, holiday footage boat trips that sort of thing we've been through that okay so the title will suggest and there won't be any engineering in it but yeah hey ho so i will put videos up while i'm away i'm away for three weeks in crete and I'll keep them coming as best I can. It'll all depend on my upload speed, Wi-Fi signal, all that sort of thing. So, cheers guys. And I will have lots more projects coming once I come back off holiday. I've got a list of things planned for the future. Cheers guys. And one thing I will say. Today, I think my subscribers quantities, and three to four months I've been going now, is 525 a huge thank you guys for subscribing it means a lot to me i'm getting great feedback i'm loving it yeah that we all get trolls and what have you and there is one there's one guy whose comments i've made sure are not there it's one of these guys that sits at home does nothing and just pushes out negativity all the time we don't need negativity in our lives do we guys we need positivity positivity and having a laugh is what makes life worth living that's what i live by guys thanks for watching